Fictive Film Fest kickoff and genre ideation. Okay, so project description. We're gonna define a new genre of movies, program a one day film festival that showcases that genre and design all aspects of it from the naming to the marketing to the live experience itself. There again is our list of deliverables. Methodology, and this is what we're gonna get into tonight. So we'll jump to that link in a second, but we're gonna read this guide for ideation at this stage. Brainstorm concepts for new genres of film. Once you've got some concepts, you're gonna watch a few movies to see if the connections are as strong as you thought. Because sometimes you saw something like when you were nine, and you're like, oh yeah, that movie totally makes sense. And you watch it and you're like, no, I was just traumatized by that one little scene and now I think it's like a much bigger deal. Um, refine the concepts as you see fit. Capture ideas for other movies you might include. And capture names for your festival. So in the next week, you do not have to come up with like say, five ideas and then watch 20 movies. That's not what you have to do. But as you're coming up with ideas and you have some that you, you're like, oh, that's a good, that'd be a cool idea. Throw those movies on in the background while you're doing other stuff um, to see if they hold up in the way that you want to. Because what we want to happen here is like, Alex is thinking about digging. Like that's a silly film festival, right? Movies about digging. But then it was this cool thing where it was like, uh, this Big Bird Digs to China movie was the first one. Then it was, um, oh, uh, is it Holes? What's that movie? Like the yes. Shia LaBeouf movie? Yes. That was the second movie. So the audience matures slightly. Then it was um, Shawshank Redemption. No, wait, that was Shawshank Redemption, then Blood Diamond, something like that. The content matured throughout the day. So it's like a silly idea, right? Like movies about digging, that's like a dumb idea. But then it, like, it was coherent and it held up and it got like more serious. So like, you didn't necessarily have to go to all of them. Like you could bring your kids to the one, like the early one, or like you could go with like someone else to see like the late one. So it was like this nice idea. That's what I mean by like the thing being coherent. We don't want to just throw together a bunch of movies and have it be like asinine. Like the goal is not to explain the project to someone and have them burst out laughing and then not bother to listen to the rest of it. The goal is to have it be like, movies about digging, and then be like, and then see that you've considered the sequencing and the programming, and be like, oh, weird, that's an interesting idea. That's our goal. Um, our parameters. The genre cannot be explicitly obvious. You know, Quentin Tarantino Film Festival, movies with Meryl Streep. It can't be an existing micro-genre, like 1970s conspiracy thrillers, or queer film of the 1990s. If there's a category for it on Netflix, you probably can't use it. And then lastly, look for, thing, for threads between things that would connect disparate films. I'm gonna jump down to the deadline here and then we're gonna go through how do we come up with ideas if we're struggling, or even if we're not. So next Wednesday, you're gonna make a simple screen presentation with three to five potential genres that you can do. Each genre should include a list of movies that would be shown, existing cover art, posters, or images for each movie. That's just that's to, of benefit to the rest of the room so that we have something to look at. And uh, three potential names for the event. Potential. Don't get stressed out about like the name or the genre. Like even the cut to three to five potential ones, come up with 10. Then having three to five is not a big deal. Um, so that's the thing, simple projected presentation. Like, don't overthink it, don't overdo it. It should be, at the very least though, one page for genre. Don't do that thing where you throw up one a vertical, and then two, it's got all the stuff on one page, and then you make us look at the same thing the whole time. That's very boring. Four strategies for coming up with ideas here. I'm gonna need class participation on this one. So the first one, is just a brain dump. This is every idea that is currently kicking around your head. Uh, especially the bad ideas. The reason that we want to capture the bad ideas is think about it like how um uh, like this. Your brain is a terrible storage device, right? It misremembers things all the time. Uh, you constantly go like, oh, what's that thing I'm thinking of? 
which if your brain was a good storage device, it would be like, oh, you're thinking of the Shawshank Redemption. Um, and then you constantly think of things at the wrong time. So like, w like when do you think of the errand that you need to run? Like you need de-icer for the sidewalk. You think of it right before bed. You think of it when you're driving in the highway the wrong direction. You think of it at one in the afternoon. You never think of it when you're on your way home and the hardware store is two blocks away unless you drive right by the hardware store. But then of course you stop at the hardware store and you forget about the ice because you're buying a shovel now. So your brain sucks at that, but the thing your brain is amazing at is finding connections between things. So start to think about the idea that your brain is a processor. It's not a storage device. So when you don't write down the bad ideas, your brain just keeps kicking them around and like not letting go of them. The minute you write down uh, movies, uh, with nonviolent vampires. Now my brain goes, oh good, thank you for writing that down, putting it somewhere secure so I can stop thinking about it and we can start coming up with other ideas. So like re reducing our cognitive load by capturing everything, especially the shitty ideas, because then we can stop thinking about them. So, Joshua? Yes. Can we talk for a second, or just back up for one second? Mm -hmm. So, like, the genre of the movie, does the movie, or the film festival, has to be like, that is what the film is about, or is it like a scene in the movie appears? Not necessarily. Uh, somebody did one, well, somebody did one where it was movies where extravagant feasts figured prominently. They were not movies about eating, they just happened to have extravagant feasts throughout the film. Uh, another person did movies where there were spontaneous dance scenes that didn't really make sense in the context of the entire rest of the movie, but they were fantastic. So, like those movies weren't about dancing and they weren't about food. Uh, this thing is very open-ended. Um, so, and to figure out how open-ended it is, what are some of the ideas that you're already got bouncing around? And I came up with a stupid one, so you get to give me some of yours. Any current ideas? Ginger playground. Did you say ginger playground? Gender. Oh. <laughs> That'll be mine. I was like, I've never heard of a ginger, ginger playground. Ginger playground. <laughs> Any movies? I've got a list of 12. Oh shit, oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Give me like two, because I, well, even though it violates what I just said, but I'm not writing 12 down. Okay, uh, oh, the, the title is too long. It's by Kate, Kate Bornstein is a queer and pleasant danger. Just put Kate Bornstein. Okay. And then Tangerine. All right, who's got one? Movies where animals have an adventure. <laughs> animal okay. adventures. <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Animal adventures. It's funny, I was thinking animals could talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking prom movies. Prom. Uh, prom movies might be a genre already. All right, well. <laughs> but we're going to capture it regardless. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a lot of them. <laughs> Sorry. Other ones. Movies with a platinum rule. What's that? Um, it's like better than the golden rule because it's like thinking about other people what they want not just you so it's like everything i should be writing out movies but i'm gonna be other ones movies where fake murders happen i like that one. That's a lot. <laughs> got the same <laughs> page. other ones who haven't i heard from yet what do you got um movies where an environment causes an identity crisis At first I was like, that sounds really complicated, and I immediately understood it. Are we still hanging on to these ideas if you're throwing them out there? No, we're not giving them to each other. I mean, you can, I don't know. I don't care if you steal them from each other, actually. Because now I'm not like not going to save my two ideas. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to steal your ideas. ideas. <laughs> I so funny, I was thinking about this because I was like, well, what would it matter as long as a person didn't take your idea and the three movies or four movies and 
as long as they didn't do that five times, <laughs> like to each person they just pull the project from. But regardless, running through this, you should all do this first and foremost when you start working on this in earnest. But well, let's get some more of these. Well, actually, what's a movie for this one? Lost in Translation. Someone, um, uh, robotic one where the female, where the guy gets trapped. It brings a robot. Trapped. It just came out, I was like, E? What, the, what was her name? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. What's a fake murder one? Um, hold on. Well, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Gone Girl and Step Brothers. Oh my God! Spoiler alert! Gone Girl and Step Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers. So, as we're doing this, and the things I'm going to do: capture all the stuff that you're thinking about and write down those movies too. And again, don't judge them because, like, Gone Girl and Step Brothers, right now, like, as two movies, that's weird, right? It doesn't work yet. We add two more, that might be like the best day of your life. So that's the thing to think about. Okay, so as you're doing this, um, capture everything you're thinking about, and then inevitably new stuff pops up just from virtue of doing this. Just keep writing until you stop having ideas. Don't worry about forcing yourself to have additional ideas. Like, this isn't like a, a marathon. This is just like a weird form of research where you just research the shit that's already in your head and you grab as much of that as possible. You know, it's like, the, my list was like, um, heist movies where the protagonist is foiling the heist, like Die Hard, or non-disaster disaster movies, like War of the Worlds, Children of Men, that space movie with Sandra Bullock, uh, movies that take place in one room. So. I'm just trying to capture all those things. If you only have three, that's cool, it doesn't matter. Like, this thing is you just get all the stuff out of your head that's currently floating around. That's our brain dump. The next one is invention. Invention is actually the most normal way of doing this, and it's also the luck method. Like, you think really hard, and hopefully you get lucky and have an idea, but, uh, it might work. Um, in general, this actually is the invention method. It's just you already had all these ideas. So we're capturing that. We get over here, this is when we start going like, okay, let's come up with an idea. So like, just from the last five minutes, who's got like a new idea that we haven't talked about? Movies that take place in tunnels. In what? In tunnels. Okay, tunnel movies. Somebody come up with a bad idea right now. Movies where the fire alarm is pulled. I just love the fire alarm. <laughs> movies where they write on a blackboard. <laughs> blackboard writing movies. <laughs> the weird thing is like that might actually prompt like a, a cool idea of like something about teachers. I was definitely thinking about violent principal movies today, but that's a genre um, that like already exists. Uh, let's come up with something out loud. See if I can come up with something stupid. Movies where a teenager gets pregnant. We're gonna write it down. Actually, we're gonna put that over here because I feel like that's an existing idea, right? I always regret that I say we have to write everything down and then I have to write it down. <laughs> um, blackboard writing movies. Other Please, stuff. Where people eat burritos. Eat burritos. Yeah. Is it Oreos? Either, either <laughs> one. <laughs> Wait, so, you know, while we're sitting here, so what's an example of a burrito eating movie? I'm trying to think of one. That just came to my head. You said bad ideas. I was thinking about movies where, oh, actually, I guess this is over here, but we'll be yeah, here. Yeah, we're not just spitballing. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> movies where people lost, <laughs> lost night movies. Dude, where's my car? Now the nice thing about this is like, if you exhaust what could go under the list, so like, dude, where's my car? 
what's that um, Las Vegas movie? Hangover. Hangover. And then there's a really disturbing Abel Ferrara movie called The Blackout. Weekend. And the last weekend. Now we got something fun. Depression and hilariousness. And then of course you could do like a Google search too, right? And like fill this out more and be like, okay, like what are like my history today was just endlessly like movies where X happens, movies where this happens. Um the problem with invention is like if we're just capturing the stuff that was floating around in our head. Like that's kind of effortless, and that's like that thing where people are like, oh, the way to come up with ideas is like take a shower. Um, what they really mean is like when you're not trying, sometimes, sometimes good ideas bubble up to the surface. Uh, but when you sit there and just try and think, some people that works out really well. Like there was this dude, Doug, I worked with at Latitude. He like magically came up with ideas. Like we would work on something together, and he'd be like, and there are always questions, which I think is a, like a good thing to remember, and it's in there too, which is like, if you ask a, an interesting question, you might get an interesting answer. The problem with that is you have to come up with an interesting question. And again, that's largely like a luck thing. Because like, what if you never have interesting questions? Like, how are you gonna suddenly have them? Like, you're however old you are, you're not suddenly gonna start having good questions or good ideas. So this is like the danger of this, but as a creative challenge, you could be like, I need to come up with whatever, 20 ideas this way, and then I'll just pull out five that are like potentially cool. Um, this to me is the standard way of working. I think it's like largely risk averse, or I'm largely risk averse to it. What I would advocate for is do this sort of thing, do the other two things we're about to do, and then this is an ongoing thing that's happening at the periphery all the random stuff that pops up, like, oh, what about this? You capture that too. Um, but being dependent on an, an invention, I think is really hard. Um, and uh, I, per I particularly am not a fan. Favorites. What, this is actually how I, like, I did this by myself in the car yesterday and came up with so many good ideas. So, someone's favorite movie or one of their favorites? Toy Story? All right, <laughs> Toy Story. She's all bad. No, wait, we, we're, just gonna do, we're just doing this one. Uh, elements of Toy Story, what do we have? Talking mammals and toys. Talking toys. So, talking toys. Growing up. Growing up. Um, Adventure. Competition, maybe? Friendship. Cowboys. Friendship. Cowboys. Astronauts. <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> Dinosaurs. Just Lanky toys. <laughs> uh, childhood. Piggy Bigs. Pizza. Pizzaisics. Is it animation something that goes on the list or not really? Oversized humans. Goes on the list. Oh, We're going for it. Oversized humans. Yeah. Little sister. Evil neighbors. <laughs> Braces, now here is the advantage of what we're doing right now. We're having tons of ideas because we don't have to invent anything. And we're not trying to be smart because these are just words. Is this backyard booby trap with the neighbors? I feel like that's a thing, right? And they have to stage a rescue, right? Yeah. Moving. Hiding under the bed. Disown. Jealousy. That's it, that's everything. <laughs> uh, okay, so he's moving, right? He's after like there's like a little car chase scene too. Oh, the army I, guys. I have actually seen oh, yeah. this movie recently. Oh wait. I forget the Um so we have car chase. Um and then what was the thing that someone just said? Disowning. Disowning. Walkie talkies. Oh my god. Barrel monkeys. <laughs> Alright, I mean I am gonna stop. Okay, so all we have here is just the elements of this movie, right? Um, somebody pick one. Friendship. Friendship. Okay, movies about friendship. Friendship. 
Frozen now and then. Toy Story. Toy Story. Toy Story 2. What was another one? Toy Story 3. The Fox and the Howler. Oh, wow. It's actually on my list. Finding Nemo. I would just say everything. <laughs> 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 What else? Beaches. What else? Friendship moment. What was that? Now and then. What else? Was it E.T. E.T. Something Street. 21 Jones Street. 21 Jones Street. Two more. SpongeBob SquarePants, then we'll be on the Sorry, I did not hear that. Saturday night. All right, we could come up with a, obviously a much longer list than this. So then the next thing we would do is start to look for one of this list and be like, is there anything if we put it together, it would make sense on some level, like it would have a logic to it, right? Because like friendship alone doesn't make these things work together on some level. But like somebody brings up, um, I think Finding Nemo, and I'm like, okay, well, like, there's this adventure aspect to it. Th those start to have like a, a conversation with each other. Um, other things that will be much more blatant, like the relationships, but we could start to go like, okay, well, like, that's got an adventure, that's got an adventure. Um, yeah, it's easy on adventure. That could potentially be like, a thing. Now here's the thing that matters. The word potentially matters a lot. It's like the inverse of should. Should sucks, potentially is great. Potentially, maybe, might. Those are fantastic words because they open up all these possibilities of what you could do, what maybe you'll do, and it reduces all that pressure of, oh, this should be good. Let's do another one. Pick another word off here that's like compelling to you. Someone. Uh, jealousy. All right. And I feel like we could actually make this more specific, right? We can make this jealous of new fill in the blank, new guy, new okay. new girl, new whoever, new animal maybe. <laughs> Movies where people are jealous of the new something. All of any. What else? Somebody actually do a Google search for movies where people are jealous of someone new. While Star I, is uh, born. What was that? Star is born. All three of them. This is the other thing that's nice about this. This is a little harder to Google. Invention, because you got to come up with an invention and then you can Google what might fit in it. This is real easy to like Google. You just Google Toy Story and you read the Wikipedia entry. Even if you've never seen it, you can figure out like, oh, it's about X, Y, and Z, and all of these other things. What about the princess uh, Yeah. Princess Diaries. I feel like there's like a, probably a, a ton of crime movies. I can't think of them right now. That would be great for this. Oh, Titanic. Um, Titanic. Talladega Nights. <laughs> Oh my God, Step Brothers. Wait, they're both the new guy. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> um, any other movies for people can think of of like, someone's super jealous of like a new character? Or an animal or something. What was that? Bridesmaids. It's funny that those just came up again. That's a good one though. Mean Girls. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Toy Story 2. Toy Story 2? <laughs> now that to me that's a cool list like that's starting to be like interesting ideas and then like some you know some of them you're like holy shit they'll work together really well um the beauty of this like we're doing legitimate work right now how long has this taken six minutes tops um 
the lists that are in like the my um, syllabus, like that I came up with, I did that in between meeting deadlines today. Like when you stop, like invention seems to require like focus and effort and like okay, I gotta come up with a good idea and blah blah blah. But like when you go into like this kind of mode, where like you do a form of research, even if the research is just what you think about it. And you pull something compelling, and you do another form of research, but you could Google this, right? You could be like, best movies about friendship, best movies about jealousy. And then all of a sudden, you're like, okay, I got Toy Story, because it's got to be on the list. Hmm. Kind of stupid it's not. And then I could start to go, like, what are movies that are so not like it, and yet work together? And in reality, I haven't seen that, 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 that. I haven't seen any of these movies besides Talladega Nights and Step Brothers, so I have no, uh, nothing to go off of. But let's pretend they work. <laughs> um, all of a sudden, like, that's like weird, right? Because you're like, Toy Story connected to these other things. Though actually, it's them by me finding Nemo and ET was like a really nice one. So this kind of idea, like you could do this so many times in an hour and have a ton of ideas. You could just take your top five favorite movies do this exercise and end up in unpredictable, weird places. That to me is the best. Like if you can do the most rational thing possible, like there's no invention, there's no creativity, it's just like lists of shit that you already know, and yet we ended up like in these cool, weird spots, and this is fake work because like I'm doing it in front of everyone and I wouldn't do it about Toy Story. Um, that makes sense, so that's outlined in here, and like the one that I did, because I had just watched it, was Die Hard. And it was like, can you scroll up a little bit? So I had like a skyscraper, disaster films, stumbling upon a crime, uh, movies that were originally supposed to star Frank Sinatra, movies that no one wanted to be in, elevator shafts, walking on broken glass. like. It, never mind that there's other <laughs> better ideas. Protagonist foiling a heist, which is an idea I really like. Then it's like, okay, skyscraper movies. And I thought of the ones I knew, and then I just Googled movies with skyscrapers. I was like, okay, I should go check these movies out and see if like, it works. Um, protagonist foiling a heist is a really nice idea. Like, cause heist movies are always about the people doing the heist. It's never about someone trying to stop it. Where it's, the hero's never trying to stop it. The hero's always like, he's gotta do this for some crazy moral reason, like to steal this diamond or whatever because like the bad guys have it. But like these are all movies where someone is stopping a heist and like that's the protagonist. Like to me, I was like, oh shit, that's a cool idea. And again, like, um, I mean, I did that driving around just 